Hey folks, it's Diane Gayhart, and I just thought I should report back on how my exam went because I went and flew to Hawaii um, last week and took the national AMFT exam um, or MFT exam in Honolulu, Hawaii, where I hope to someday retire. And um, hopefully I passed, we'll find out. I gotta wait a month like everybody else. Um, but I just wanted to share some of my um, reflections of the journey because it started out almost on a whim. Um, I was actually anxious about all the fires in LA, where can I move and had my kind of dramatic uh, in, inner talk and debate with myself for um, a month or so last November. And I just started going for it and it kind of took on a life of its own and ended up teaching, as many of you know, a license exam prep in the way. And it really was a healthy experience, I, I think, as someone who's now been licensed for nearly 25 years to go through as an educator, um, trying to prepare people, MFTs, for their exam in my um, licensing course, I ended up with both people taking the national and the California exam. And I got to hear everyone's stories and I just really learned so much. And I think the first thing I wanna say is I have so much more empathy for everyone going through this process. And so if you are going through this process, if you have failed the exam, if you're terrified of it, you know, I just wanna let you know, oh my God, I, I, I see what you're going through. I have, it was, it is not fun. It is not a great process. It is not an ideal process. And yeah, it is a very stressful process. And so if that's what you're experiencing, I want to validate that. Um, on the second, on the other hand though, um, there's no easy way to make it a, a perfect or great process. And so I hope, um, through this video or my other trainings related to the exam, I, I hope you develop a realistic expectation of the process. First and foremost, it is not like an undergrad exam where you're supposed to be getting 100%. I didn't get 100% on any of my practice exams, FYI. In fact, I rarely got over 90%, FYI. So you really want to be realistic and understanding. It is not a perfect exam. and in the sense that it, the breadth of what they're trying to assess is um, just so broad, it's too broad. So I also experienced the side of the person who is trying to create a course to prepare people for it. I'm like, holy God, where are the edges of knowledge that I should reach um, or you know, go to? What do you need to know? It's not like a final exam for a course where you know exactly what you need to study. It is, it is it is unending, it is infinite what you could possibly study and know to prepare for one of these exams. So it's a very different type of test. And I um, think it's real important because I, I think people were saying the best part of my licensing exam was watching me take the exam and miss questions, you know, and I, I, I did that and I publicly humiliated myself so that to, to really help people develop a realistic assessment or understanding, really not an assessment, understanding of what this process is. And it's not something that even someone who's been licensed and practicing for a long time, who's written books and been teaching and preparing people for these exams successfully, I might add, um, for many years, it doesn't mean I get all the questions right. You know, that said, I was very surprised because um, I did take several different practice exams and, and such. I just, um, that, how do I, how do I say this in a politically correct way, but that the quality of the study materials um, was not what I, I thought it was. And I think, cause I mean, I've, I've taken both the counseling exam, the MFT exam, and I took it, you know, straight out of graduate school, like everyone else, or took my LPC exam while I was in my doctoral program. And in my mind, like, the study materials were like all correct and the end all be all and that's all I needed to know. And I think that's also a fallacy. And if you have purchased more than one, you know that they're very different actually. And I would also say there is no external third party review for most of these um, exams and the content that they're teaching. And I, I will just say, I was surprised at the number of factual errors, like content level errors you know, that I was seeing in, even in prep materials. And so that's also something to know 
as you um, approach this process, and I, either I, I certainly can argue even with some of the exam questions, you know, I'm like, well, you know, I would actually, da, 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 da. so, you know, I'm the one who's arguing with everybody as you, as you can well imagine, but there were some definite like black and white incorrect information in my entire journey over the past uh, 10 months. And so I think that's also important to know. And so I think, I guess I want to leave this um, conversation of this video, um, you know, with two different thoughts. One, for those of you who are in the process of getting licensed, I encourage you to reduce your expectations on yourself, be um, very thoughtful and um, in a, consumers of all of the different materials out there helping you to prepare and even just thinking about what you're learning. I mean, use this process to become a better clinician at the end of the day and to not use it to judge your total self-worth on how this process goes for you. I think that's so important because I think um, a lot of what people were telling me that was so helpful is just regaining their confidence um, watching me on this journey, stumbling and falling myself. So I think that is an important message. You know, the other message to the broader MFT community is I, I think there's, there is room to improve this process from all sides. I mean, obviously there's never going to be a perfect exam. Um, although I can see the problem with having this unending, almost infinite, you know, there's not a lot of, you know, the scope of knowledge is so broad and it's, you know, one of the things that really struck me was like, God, you know, let's study 20 to 30 theories for the exam, but most of us in real life have used two to three, you know, why, why have we constructed this exam process the way we have? And there are definitely good sound reasons for it. And I understand why we are here. And I think the question I want to ask the community of, you know, MFT and even just mental health licensing in general, like, can we do better? And I do believe sometime in the future, probably 20, 30 years from now, and hopefully, I don't know if I, I don't know if I hope to be training MFTs at that point, um, that we will be using things like simulation where we have a closer and better measure of a person's actual clinical skills where, you know, but can we make this process a little more humane? Can we make it more um, uplifting for the people going through it? Um, and so, I don't know, that's just one of the conversations I hope to have um, going forward with folks about the licensing exam. So, and just thinking about how can we make this, um, and improve upon. I mean, what we have isn't certainly not terrible. And actually, I was most the best part of the entire experience was taking the actual exam. I was I was real pleased with with that exam. I don't know if I could say more than I was I was pleased with the exam when I actually took it. That's I think legally I think I can say that without violating any um confidentiality uh, any content related to the exam. Um, so I was pleased. Um, but I still think there are ways we can certainly make this process um, even better that, and I think the preparatory culture that we have created um, that is very high anxiety, high stress is not helping anyone to be a better clinician. And that's really the piece that I would love to see both people going through the process. So if you were in my class, I told you not to talk to people who are stressing out and talking negative and about the exam, because it doesn't, it doesn't help. It, it doesn't move things forward. But how do we have better conversations, both you know, with those who are preparing, as well as um, those of us who are educators or in, in the positions of power, we're creating exam or prep courses. How do we make it a more uplifting, positive experience um, for everyone going through that so that people go through this process and leave like I did, feeling pleased, feeling like they're better for going through the process they're, um, and that they're better clinicians and that they leave with increased confidence about who they are um, as professionals. So that's my hope. And I just thought I would report back to you how it went and in my little kind of experimental journey here um, back into the world of taking a licensing exam. Um, so hopefully uh, I said, was able to offer something that was useful and inspiring to you wherever you are in your journey. Take care, be well.